With the Jets roster likely to undergo a bit of an offseason makeover, can the Jets find some free agent value? Are there any centers and wingers who might be willing to join the Jets? We'll talk about all of that on tonight's episode of Locked On, Winnipeg Jets. You're locked on the Hockey Jets, your daily podcast on the Winnipeg Jets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey friends, and welcome to tonight's episode of Locked On, Winnipeg Jets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Harrison Lee, an avid Winnipeg Jets fan and an online blogger. You can follow me on Twitter at HLivingLoco and at LO underscore Winnipeg Jets. Thanks for making Locked On Jets your first listen of the day every day. If you like what you're hearing, be sure to like, follow, and subscribe on all of your favorite podcasting platforms and YouTube. Doing so, of course, is always free of charge and ensures you never miss another episode. Most of all, though, we just love and appreciate your support. Tonight's episode, I wanted to talk about the upcoming free agent market because, to be honest, it kind of sucks. But by the same token, the Jets might still be able to get some value that's worth exploring. I'm not going to sit here and say that it's going to be a lot of great uh Uh, value. I'm going to be honest, I think, especially for where the Jets are deficient, which is on, you know, the the center depth and honestly on the defensive side of things. It's looking a little bit on the mediocre side, but uh, we'll explore all of that in just a little bit. Before we dive into free agent talk, though, let's talk about our friends and partners at Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and be sure to use promo code Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Listen uh, later on to hear more about how Game Time can save you time and money on your next ticket purchase. Now, like I said. The Jets are going to have a number of organizational needs and free agency this year. uh, It's, it's looking a little bit on the thin side. If we're being honest, I think for what the Jets are probably after, they're going to be looking for a two C and honestly, if Ehlers leaves, I would expect them to go out and look for a, a middle six to top six winger, which Given that the Jets need to get younger and faster, I don't know how I feel about that. Uh, Winnipeg is definitely after um, skill, I would say. I think they're going to try and find some good value quality players. But I think it's, it's a little bit concerning that given the market, the Jets may find themselves in a bad position overpaying for a player who might not really be the right fit. I think that there's going to be plenty of players who technically tick off boxes for the Jets, but in terms of actually delivering quality... Mm, I'll be honest, I think the uh, the number of players that are really going to fit the status are going to be few and far between, right? We're going to start off very briefly with defensemen because that is one of the areas where the Jets definitely want to improve their mobility. And while I do think Winnipeg has some guys internally who might legitimately be great options, you know, you might also look at uh, maybe taking a pass at Chris Tanev. Tanev uh, was obviously one of the big misses at the trade deadline. All these teams sat back and didn't didn't really beat out Dallas's offer, and the Stars might have picked up one of the most impactful rentals on the market. Now, the thing with Tanev is that he is 34, and at this stage of his career, he's probably looking for a four-year deal or something, which... Uh, Obviously, for the Jets, wouldn't be ideal, but given that he's still very, very, very good, I do wonder if his puck-moving ability on top of his defensive acumen is something that's worth taking the risk with. Uh, Not to say that, like, Tanev is going to outperform Brendan Dillon or some of these other guys, but given how good he's been for the Stars, maybe he's exactly what the Jets need. If you want somebody who could actually play alongside Morrissey and maybe give DeMello some support, I think Tanev would be a really interesting option. Now, of course, Tanev would require uh, at least one of Schmidt or Pionk to be moved. And at that point, then you start to ask, okay, so, you know, does he block any of the other young defenders on this team from stepping up? And I I don't know. I don't think so. I think if you consider Dylan to be departing, right, then you could potentially run something like Morrissey and Tanev. Uh, you could do maybe Sandberg and DeMello. And then perhaps on your third pairing, if you keep Schmidt around, you could do Heinola and Schmidt, which would be a very interesting offseason. I think logistically you could probably make it work, but I think the reality is uh, Heinola would probably be paired with Pionk because I think the organization just loves him too much. In terms of players that I would probably avoid, uh, Klingberg, definitely one of the biggest ones. Uh, John's just not good. 
I think at this stage of his career, he is a hard miss. Um, you know, he used to be at one point for the Stars a great attacking minded blue liner, but since he's aged out and moved to Toronto, you can tell that he's definitely uh, declining rapidly. So I would probably uh, steer clear of that. I would also not really be super interested in either of Shea or Pesci. Pesci is interesting because he might be a solid two way second pairing guy, but if you're going to be spending the money, I think you should be allocating it you know, to, to players who really make a difference for the, for the blue line. And that's where like Tanev definitely qualifies on that level of player for me, but I don't know that the jets would really be interested in it. I guess you could talk about Zadorov. Zadorov is, uh, I mean, I don't know. Uh, the thing with Nikita is that he's very big. He hits a lot and he's actually surprisingly decent, right? Zadorov has had moments where you'll see him handle the puck in transition and he's actually kind of, kind of decent, but then it will also have moments where he sort of loses his cool or loses a defensive marking. That's very obvious. And you're kind of like, okay, yeah, he gives a little bit back more than you would care to, to, uh, I would say feel comfortable with, but by the same token, I mean, like, I don't know, his free agent contract is probably going to be expensive. And I think given his success with the Canucks, I just don't really see a, a way where I would be interested in, in really awarding that sort of money. Sean Walker, I guess you could also take a look at. The only thing with Walker is that he'll probably be expensive, but if you can find a way to get him in, he'd basically be like adding a younger Dylan DeMello with a little bit more of an offensive leaning. Uh, Walker could probably bolster Winnipeg's uh, middle pairing and do a great job. He'd be the clear upgrade on Neil Pionk, but I kind of feel like he's going to find some way to stay with Colorado. I think the Avs might move some salary to try and keep him, and if that's the case, okay. I mean, I guess that makes sense. Uh, Colin Miller, you could probably bring back for the Jets, and I think he'd do a serviceable job. I don't think he's quite on the level of a Sean Walker or some of the other guys, certainly not on the level of a Chris Tanev, but in terms of being an okay third-pairing defender, I mean, again, you'd probably be, probably be looking at him as more of a press box kind of depth. I would still play him personally over some of the current guys on the right side, but I know that the Jets' defense and their coaching staff – they may have other ideas about how that should be run. So I don't know. The free agent market for blue liners is a little bit on the thin side. Uh, Troy Stetcher would probably be one of the most interesting options that I don't think gets a lot of attention. Uh, Stetcher is really good. And for some reason, he just keeps bouncing around uh, a number of different teams. But if Winnipeg could somehow bring him in, I'd be more than open to uh, hearing it out for, for bringing him for the third pairing. Stetcher in his prime, was a very solid puck moving two-way defender with a pretty decent shot. I don't know that he's quite as good as he used to be in his prime, but I think he could still bring some really good ability and he'd certainly be an upgrade on like Pionk or something, right? Uh, I know that that's not really a, a high bar to clear, but if you're looking for guys who can be maybe um, some sort of, you know, two-way attacking minded blue liner with some good puck moving ability and good passing, Stetcher's probably more in that vein than Neil is. And you're not going to get like tremendous amounts of firepower from these guys. But in terms of upgrading and just adding a little bit more defensive stability and puck moving ability to the back end, I think guys like Stetcher would be a wise investment, right? He's probably not going to be super expensive. He might be able to help you move some other salary out if you can bring him in and perhaps swap him in for somebody like Schmidt or Pionk. And I think it would make the Jets a better overall team. That's if the Jets are really trying to uh, use a free agent or two here in the offseason. I feel like Winnipeg's going to try to run things back for the most part. I get that vibe with this team. I think I feel like DeMello and Dylan are both are both probably going to come back, which would then mean that Schmidt or, or Pionk is probably out, most likely Schmidt. And then that doesn't really leave many other spots for free agents because then you've got Heinola, who definitely needs to get ice time. So, uh I have a feeling next year's blue line group is going to be a little bit on the middling side, but Hey, I'm open to being surprised and perhaps Chevy has a bit of a, a bit of a surprise hidden somewhere up his sleeve, but we'll have to wait and see if that's really the case. Now where I, I do think the jets might really start to invest a little bit is probably more on the center and wing side. I think that there's quite a few candidates who I'd be interested in potentially looking at, and we'll talk about all of those guys or at least a handful of them in just a little bit. Before we go any further, though, I did want to shout out all of our friends and partners, including our friends at Game Time. 
Game Time is an authorized ticket marketplace of the NBA, which makes getting playoff tickets even faster and easier. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to tip off. Now, for those of you who have seen uh, some of the prices for courtside seating and stuff, you know that this year's NBA playoffs and really uh, the finals tickets that are coming out are just crazy, right? Game time totally gets it, and they know that a lot of times when you're using other services, you actually get hit with tons of surprise fees and all sorts of extra charges. That's why all their prices are all in uh, up front. They offer you views from your seat, too, so you're not just blindly paying hundreds of dollars for a prime seat that you can't even tell where it is. They want to make sure that you're actually spending your money wisely, and they always come back with their lowest price guarantee, event cancellation protection, and so much more. And of course, they also offer last-minute ticket deals, flash deals, and zone sales. So if you're trying to find you know, the best value and best bang for your buck for a big ticket that's going to be convenient and easy to buy, you really should go with Game Time. Take the guesswork out of buying NBA tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and be sure to use promo code Lockdown NHL for $20 off your first First purchase again terms apply create an account and redeem code l-o-c-k-e-d-o-n-n-h-o for twenty dollars off download game time today last minute tickets lowest price guaranteed while we're at it i also wanted to recommend our friends at uh, indeed a lot of you might have heard me talk about indeed before but if you haven't just know that there's no i in team but there is one in indeed that's the hiring platform that you need to build your special team because indeed is the only hiring platform where you can attract interview and hire all in one place instead of spending hours on multiple job sites searching for candidates with the right skills indeed's a powerful hiring platform that can help you do it all with instant match over 80 percent of employers get quality candidates recommended to them uh, whose resumes match their uh, indeed uh, you know, job descriptions and qualifications the moment that they sponsor a job. And that is super powerful because it means that you're not wasting time or money looking for candidates who are actually the kind of people that you want working for you, right? If you're assembling a star, a star team, especially as a small business that doesn't have a lot of time or money to waste, you have to be efficient and indeed totally gets it. Candidates you invite to apply are three times more likely to apply to your job than candidates who only see it in a regular search. That's a big deal, and that means that you're going to get really quality applicants who actually want to work for you. I think that's a great thing, and as somebody who has used Indeed when I was looking for work myself, I can personally attest to the fact that their resume building system and stuff is very detailed. It's great. It's super convenient. And, of course, you only pay for applications that meet your must-have requirements. So join more than 3 million businesses that already use uh, Indeed to hire great employees because right now you can start hiring with a $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your job posted indeed.com slash locked on offer is only a good uh, only good for a limited time claim your 75 dollar credit right now at indeed.com slash locked on indeed.com slash locked on terms and conditions apply need to hire you need indeed hey friends and welcome back to tonight's episode of locked on winnipeg jets part of the locked on podcast network your team every day Every day, thank you so much for rejoining us on tonight's episode as we are obviously talking about some fun stuff. Uh, the Jets, you know, obviously have a lot of offseason work to do, some of which is going to be on the free agent side. Some of it might involve trades. Uh, that part I'm, I'm not as eager to get into, to be honest. I do worry that the trade market's going to be a little bit rough on the Jets. But assuming that Winnipeg is more interested in bringing in some free agents as well, maybe there's a chance that they can actually find a center or a winger that can supplement this middle six core and also give us some speed out wide. Cause that's definitely something where uh, I think Winnipeg got exposed in the playoffs. And given that the free agent market this year is a little bit on the mediocre side, it's going to be hard finding value, but we're going to try and find a couple of players that maybe the jets should give a look at instead of just bringing back Sean Monahan and Tyler to before we take a look at some of the centers that might be available, just wanted to let you know, uh, for all of you Fox Sports and ESPN watchers, are you tired of all the shouting? Do you find you have to turn the volume down? Well, you should make the switch to Locked On Sports Today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel programmed for you daily to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports Today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news, streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app, all part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Now, like I said, for center, obviously center depth is going to be a, a big question for the Jets uh, this offseason. I think in particular, Winnipeg's probably looking at 
you know, the market being a little bit not great for, for UFAs and the fact that they need to get faster uh, down the middle. And they're probably asking themselves, who the heck is going to uh, man the middle for us next year? And that's why I think they keep pushing the Sean Monahan thing, which I just don't really love. I, I do like Sean and I think he's a good player. But I think when you saw him in the playoffs, you kind of realized he just struggled to keep up. And it was especially noticeable when he also played with Toffoli. Now, I know that initially I was pretty high on their performances, but I think in the playoffs when you're playing a team like Colorado that's just speed, speed, speed for the whole series, it just wears you down. And I think the Jets really struggled to have uh, more than one or two lines that were able to keep pace with the abs. And then on top of that, the coaching staff then made it worse by putting together combinations that got shelled. And so whatever combinations that you were hoping for that could maybe mitigate some of the speed issues never really came to fruition. So it's not all on Monaghan and Toffoli. And I don't think, you know, putting all the blame there is necessarily fair. Uh, although I do still think that Toffoli for me was probably uh, a big disappointment. I was really expecting more out of him and it just didn't really wow me the way I thought he would. So um, tough one there, but in terms of like middle, uh, middle six or even top six centers, you just don't have a lot to work with, if we're being honest. Your best options are guys like uh, Alex Venberg, Jonathan Marcheseau, and Adam Henrique, which uh, Henrique I, I could probably skip. Um, I think Adam's a nice player, and I think he makes sense as like a middle six center. I just don't really feel like he's going to be the kind of guy that the Jets should really commit money to. Uh, the same uh, feeling that I sort of have about Marcheseau. Marcheseau is definitely starting to decline a bit. And while he is more in the vein of a player who I think the Jets should be interested in, in terms of his profile, I'd be looking to get a guy who's on the younger side. Now, Venberg is still of interest. Depending on what his next contract ask is, Alex might be the player who could make sense as sort of a solid two-way center, uh, a nice passer. He just never scores. That's the weird thing with him is like he's a super great, super talented distributor and creator. He just doesn't score. Um, and that's kind of a problem for the Jets, right? Finishing talent has sort of come at a premium for this team. And so Venberg definitely ticks off a couple of boxes. I think between him and Monaghan, I'd probably prefer Venberg. I think he's a little more versatile, and that's not really a knock on Sean so much as it is Monaghan just being, um, well, I would say needing a few more things to, to be successful at even strength. On the power play, Monaghan's great, right? But you still need him to do a little more at 5v5. And that's kind of where I think his game has sort of hit a wall. Now, one player that I think is going to come up repeatedly, especially for the Jets, is Chandler Stevenson. And that's, for me, that's a hard pass. Uh, I liked Stevenson at one point. I think he was a fun player, but he's 30 now. And a lot of his best success came alongside Mark Stone. And now that both he and Stone are getting on the wrong side of 30 and Stone has a long injury history while Stevenson's more of a middle six guy, I feel like he's going to get a huge contract and he's not really going to be worth it. So um, for me, that's that's a hard pass. I think I would I would steer clear of his next contract ask. And, you know, again, if you're looking at players who are really worth the money, um, I just I have a hard time seeing too many centers that make the you know, make a ton of sense now. I know I've been saying that I didn't really want to bring Monahan back too much, but there was something interesting where somebody said there might be wiggle room on his next contract, which depending on what kind of wiggle room we're talking about, I'm more amenable to it if it's not like a crazy expensive thing. If it's like a three-year, $4 million deal, that for me is a lot more livable than some of the other contracts I could envision, right? I feel like his contract ask is going to start at like a five. That's where I get squeamish. But if it's more in the four and a half range, I'm not against that. I think that's a little more, a little more acceptable. I could live with it. It wouldn't be perfect. But again, if you're concerned that there's just not going to be a center that can really step up and you don't think that Lambert's going to be able to do it in the next two years. Okay, I get it. Uh, Monahan is a solid player. Maybe he'd be a little bit better away from Toffoli. Maybe that's what was missing. And if Perfetti really starts to hit it off with him this year, uh, you know, maybe that's where things really start to turn. But I think a lot of that depends on what happens with Winnipeg's wing depth because Ehlers getting traded would definitely crater a lot of our speed and transition and our skills. So yeah, you know, it's a tough one. Um, it, it's really down to how the Jets play the free agent market in terms of wingers or maybe even the trade market, especially if they move Ehlers, because after that, 
everything then kind of gets thrown into the pot. And I think you, you walk away with more questions than answers, but in terms of wingers, I think there's actually more wing depth that could be intriguing for the jets than there is uh, down the middle. And we'll talk about a couple of players who might be worth investigating in just a little bit. Before we go too much further, though, just wanted to give you a heads up about Monopoly Go and why you should be giving it a shot, especially for all of you who have mobile phones, which is all of us. So you've probably heard me talk about Monopoly Go before, and you might be saying, well, flag on the play. You've mentioned them before. Why are you talking about them again? I honestly think Monopoly Go is one of the best twists on a classic uh, board game that I've seen because with Monopoly Go, you can team up with friends for time tournaments where you work together to build up each other's boards. And the more you win together, the more you can unlock in terms of great prizes. You get everything from unique stickers that you can trade with friends to complete your albums with. Uh, there's new playing pieces to travel the boards with. Like, you know, if you get the classic little pieces, like my favorite's always the dog. Maybe you're a top hat person. There's tons and tons of pieces to choose from, though. And of course, no one loves trolling their friends more than yourself when it comes to uh, emojis that you can send when you're smashing their buildings or stealing from their vaults. Monopoly Go feels new and exciting every day with constantly changing tournaments and challenges. A ton include their own unique mini games like Digging for Treasure or a Robot Pachinko Machine. There's always new timed events to help you win big, like massive multipliers for everything you win or rent frenzies. There's always something fun to discover in Monopoly Go, so get off the bench and go download it now free on Google Play or the App Store. Game on! Hey friends, and welcome back to tonight's episode of Locked On, Winnipeg Jets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Every day, thank you so much for rejoining us on these final closing thoughts tonight as we're just doing some free agent preliminary stuff. Obviously, the Jets have their own free agents to contend with over the next year or two, but in terms of UFAs, right, are there really many options that you want to see in Winnipeg? And the answer should probably be no. Um, but in terms of guys that I really would be after, I actually think the wing market this year is very interesting. One guy that I would really be after for the Jets is Daniel Sprong. Sprong's been very good for the wings, uh, and he's also been a player that's just somehow routinely been passed over time and time again. Uh, Sprong, for me, is one of those really good finishers who's actually grown the rest of his game as well. I feel like his skating is not too bad. He's got a great shot. He's, he's a smart, smart player. And if you want a guy who is perhaps still within a, a reasonably prime age range. I mean, he's not in his prime necessarily, but he's still really good. And he's a guy who's like a proven 20-ish goal scorer. You could do a lot worse. Uh, Sprong for me is a really underrated player. I feel like every year he just seemingly, um, he's either had really bad injury luck or, or coaches maybe just haven't given him a ton of ice time. But I want to put this into perspective. In 12 minutes this year, he had uh, 12 minutes of ice time per game in 76 games. 43 points and points are never the be all end all. But if you're talking about a guy who could maybe do like a Morgan Barony kind of thing uh, in terms of being just a really great finisher and limited ice time sprung for me is a, a great player that I am very interested in. And if he doesn't get extended with the wings, I think you really have to make a play for him. He'd be the kind of middle six to top six winger that the jets might be looking for on the right side. And while he wouldn't be like an Ehlers replacement, I do think he fits a big hole for the Jets, uh, namely the finishing, right? The Jets just need more goal scoring ability. And if you got a guy like him who you could maybe pay like five million or something for for a couple of years, he seems like a really, really interesting player. Maybe you can get him for less than that. Um, and, and obviously there may be like a Winnipeg tax, but given how much he scored in what amounts to like bottom six minutes, I have to think that prorated alongside a guy like Mark Shifley or something, he might put up monster numbers. I'm not saying that he's ready for first line duty. I'm not even saying that, you know, you want him in the top six, but he might be. And given how good he's been in the past couple of seasons, I think it's a risk that's really worth taking, especially considering some of the other wingers out there are like Max Pacioretty, uh, David Perron. Jakob Verana is out there, but Verana at this point probably... I don't know that he's really an NHLer at this rate. He might be an okay, like bottom sixer, but I don't know that I'm really into that. And in terms of like right sided wing depth, you know, the Jets don't have a ton there. So a guy like Sprong could be really, really helpful. I'd also be interested in Kevin LeBanc. Uh, LeBanc is obviously on the way out of San Jose. And I know that his last few seasons haven't really been super impressive in terms of counting stats. 
I think he could come to the Jets and be an absolute menace. If you're looking for like a Connor Garland kind of uh, smaller forward with a great shot and really solid skating who can be uh, a low slot or face-off circle menace, LeBlanc might be the guy. Uh, he's not that far removed from having some really solid seasons. And while he doesn't have like a ton of recent success that I think is going to drive people uh, to, to me immediately hit a big contract extension, he's one of those guys where I feel like, you know, if you're looking for a player who might be a safe bet to get to like the 30 point range on a bargain contract of like two and a half million or something, he might be worth taking a look at. Again, he's not like a crazy, crazy scorer. And I think, you know, the years of him putting up like 40 or 50 points have probably passed him. But if he comes to the Jets, maybe he resurrects some of his early Sharks career success. Uh, he's kind of bounced around the lineup a lot. And last year uh, was probably one of his best recent seasons. He put up 33 points, which is pretty decent. Um, but I think, you know, with how the, how the Sharks are the past season, it's really hard to look too much into his numbers. He was shooting at like 3.3%, which is crazy low for his career. I think he's a solid bounce back candidate. And given that San Jose's offense is pretty poor, if you move him to the Jets and you give him some better supporting uh, players to work with, he might get to the 40 to 45 point range and actually give you really good value on a cheap contract. And uh, LeBanc is a guy that I think has been rumored about uh, rumored to be linked with the Jets in terms of like being targeted at trade deadlines. I don't know if anything ever really came of that or if that was more just fan suggestion than anything. But now that he's a free agent and he doesn't really have great counting stats, this might be the time to cash in and see if you can get him on a couple of years, uh, maybe like three years at two and a half million. You give him a place to kind of settle down. And I know that, you know, his last contract was a little bit higher than that, uh, almost $5 million, But let's be real. He's not getting that in free agency. Unless some team really pays through the nose, I just can't see there being that many teams lining up to give him something like that. I think the Jets could make a good offer. I think that they could maybe even get it to like $3 million. Maybe that would be fair. Uh, you get him at $3 million for three years, and he's going to be like a 30 to 5 to 40 point score for you. That's like right on the money. I think that's a great value contract. And I think kind of in the strong uh, vein, I think he'd supplement Winnipeg's offensive depth really nicely. The Jets should really focus on adding more skill and speed up and down the lineup. And like LeBron's not going to blow anyone away but he's definitely not to Foley. And I think that could be a big boost for the Jets. So, you know, look, the free agency market is not going to be crazy, but I think if you're looking for guys on the right side who could help, that's really where you want to make your bank. The left side, um, <laughs> there's not as much to be excited about. Arvidsson is obviously a big name that could be interesting, but he's just always hurt. Uh, Victor's a great player. I love him, but he is always hurt. So that for me is kind of a, a bit of a letdown. Uh, otherwise, I mean... I don't know if you're, if you're really excited about players like Travis Boyd or something, uh, I guess. Um, Anthony Duclair might be one of the few exceptions on the left side where I would say I'd be willing to give that one a look. Uh, Duclair, I don't know what his career plans are at this point. He's still at a pretty good age. He's a great scorer, and he's definitely um, somebody that has proven time and time again that he's capable of being like a 15 to 20 goal scorer. I think that he could be a really good asset for the Jets on the left side, especially if they do trade Ehlers. And while he's not going to have like tons of two-way acumen or defensive work, again, if you're looking for a guy who brings really quality finishing and is not that far removed from some big seasons with the Panthers and stuff, I wouldn't be averse to it. I think Duke is a really fun player. Uh, I think that he could be a really nice asset for the Jets. And, you know, last uh, last season, he put up some pretty big numbers um, in pretty limited minutes. I think, you know, he could even be great for the Jets. I'm just looking at his Tampa Bay record, and he had like 15 points in 17 games. I feel like Duke is a player, again, who would really fit up and down your lineup. And if you're the Jets, you could get him in on a reasonable contract at like four and a half million to five million. I think if you get him in that range, um, you could certainly make that happen. Obviously, all of this is sort of assuming that the Jets are able to work out some of the, the salary issues. Uh, Winnipeg obviously has to move some salary off the back end. I think that's probably a start. And then maybe you, you cut some forwards here. You might look at moving Ayafalo maybe moving Appleton. And if you swap out some of these grittier four checky guys with some real genuine skill up front that can help you on both the power play and at even strength, I think that there's a lot of value for the Jets to be had there. And Winnipeg might even be better next season, right? Defensively, they were great this year. 
but they needed more scoring output. And that's where the Jets can really make hay with some of these savvy free agent ads. So we'll see how the Jets play the market. Uh, Winnipeg is always one of those teams that's very patient, sometimes to a fault. But I think it's paid off over the past couple of seasons. Maybe they've got a surprise for us in store this offseason. Let me know what free agents you might be interested in. Maybe you think none of these guys really fit the bill. Maybe you'd prefer the Jets just run it back with what they had this year. Let me know in the comments below or at my social medias, at HA Living Loco and at LO underscore Winnipeg Jets. For tonight's episode, though, that is going to be all the time that we have. I thank you so much for making Locked On Jets your first listen of the day every day. We'll see you back here tomorrow with even more offseason coverage and some playoff coverage. So don't go anywhere. Have a great night. And as always, go Jets go.